I'm Luna. I'm gonna read Magic Trio's Merlin Mission, Dragon of the Red Dawn. Chapter 1. For Merlin's Sake. Tap, tap, tap. Jack was dreaming that the white bird was peek pecking at his window. Tap, tap. A red bird appeared and peek pecked with the white bird. Tap, tap. Jake, Jack. Wake up, said Annie. Jack opened his eyes. There's here. They're here. Said Annie, who? The birds? Said Jack. No, Teddy and Kathleen. Annie rushed to the window and waved outside. They're tossing pebbles at our windows. Teddy and Kathleen. Jack jumped out of bed and joined Jack and Annie at the window. The two young enchanters of Camelot were standing in Jack, Jack and Annie's front yard. They was dressed in long dark clothes. Clothes. They smiled and waved at Jack and Annie. Merlin must have sent it, sent them," said Jack. Teddy made a walking motion with his fingers and pointed toward the Frogwood Woods. Annie nodded eagerly. "They want us to meet them um, at the treehouse," she said to Jack. "Hurry and get dressed before Mom and Dad wake up." Annie started out of the Jack's room. When she got got to the door, she turned. "Oh, one I." Don't forget to ring the wands of Dianthus. Jack threw the on his clothes. He grabbed his backpack and peeked inside. The wand was still. Um, the wand was there. Jack put his pack on his pa- back. Then he slipped quietly downstairs and up out the door. Annie was standing in front of the porch. Let's go, she said. Jack and Annie ran across their yard and dashed up the sidewalk. I wonder where. Why, why they came for us? Said Annie. I wonder where we're going. Said Jack. I wonder everything. Said Annie. Jack and Annie crossed the street and hurried into the frogger woods. The early March trees looked weary from winter, gray and brown, no, with no leaves on them yet. Look, said Annie. Out of rest, they were waiting for us. Jack looked up. Teddy and Kathleen were waving from the window of the magic tree house. Jack grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Annie followed. When Jack and Annie climbed inside the tree house, they threw their arms around Teddy and Kathleen. We're so glad to see you, cried Annie. And we're so happy to see you also, said Annie. Said Kathleen. The sea girl's lovely water blue eyes sparkled. Indeed, said Teddy. It has been too long. What's our mission this time? Asked Jack. Where's Merlin sending us? Teddy glanced at Kathleen. I fear Merlin does does not even know we are here. Said Teddy. We have come not at his bidding, but for his sake. What does that mean? Asked Jack. Merlin is not well. Said Kathleen. He complains. Complains that he's getting old and feeble, and that life is full of so- sorrows. He's not to eat or sleep. Oh no," said Annie. "All of Kamala wishes to help him," said Teddy. "But no one knows quite how. What can we do? Help with? To- What can we do to help?" Asked Jack. Teddy picked up the book from the corner of the treehouse. Throughout the ages, people all over the world have thought of secret of happiness. He said, "Merlin wants to search for our four secret of this secret to share with Merlin." She believes that the first one might be found here. Jack t- took the book from Teddy. He read the title aloud. A journey to old Japan. Oh, wow, we've been to Japan for before," said Annie. "Before we met you, Jack said to Teddy and Kathleen, 'We had adventures with ninjas.' Yes, Morgan told us," said Teddy. "But she said that on jo- that on that journey, you visit the countryside. This time, you must travel to the capital city. Are you guys coming with us?" asked Annie. "I'm afraid we're not." Said Teddy, Kathleen, we must return to Camelot now to help Morgan, since Merlin has fallen, fallen in, fallen ill. She has taken taken on much of his work. Work. You have a wand, do you not? Asked Teddy. Yep, said Jack. He reached into his backpack and took backpack and took out the one of Dianthus. 
the the thrilled one was just like unicorn's horn. With the help of magic wand, you will make your own magic," said Teddy. "That's what that's what Merlin said when he gave gave it to us," said Annie. "But he didn't say how," said Jack. "It's very simple," said Teddy. "The wand has three rules. First, it only works for the good of for others. The wand can never be used for selfish reasons. Second, the wands work only after you have tried to." Try your very hardest without his help," said Kathleen. "Do not attempt to use his magic too quickly. And third, the wand only works in with a ma- command command of five words," said Teddy. "So you must choose your words carefully." "Can you review all that, please?" asked Jack. "Don't worry, I got it," said. Any, we have to go. We have to help Merlin as soon as we can. If the trios, if the trios take us to Japan, how will you back go back to Camelot? Jacks asked Teddy and Kathleen. Teddy and Kathleen held up their hands. They each wore wore a sparkling blue blue ring. Our magic rings will take us home. Said Kathy. Said Kathleen. And this book from Camelot. Camelot's library will bring you back to home to Frog Creek," said Teddy. After you have completed your mission, he picked up another book lying on the corner. It was a book about Pennsylvania that Jack and Annie had used on their first ma- magic ma- trio some adventures. Thanks," said Jack. "Goodbye," said Annie. "Take care, take good care of Merlin." Well, we we will try. So Kathleen, she she and Teddy raised their magic rings to their to their lips. They whis whispered a word so softly for Jack and Annie to hear, then blew on his ring on the rings. As they blew, the young sister began to fade into the cool morning air. In the moments they had disappeared completely, silence filled the trios. Annie turned to, turned to Jack. Ready, she said. Jack nodded. He pointed to the cover of the Japan book. I wish we could go there. He said. The trio started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter Two: The Imperial Garden. Jack opened his eyes. Soft morning light shone across the floor to the tree of the trios. Pink flowers bloomed on the branch outside the window. Jack and Annie were wearing brown baggy pants and brown silk robes with blue sashes. On their feet were stiff white socks and straw sandals. Jack's backpack had turned into a burlap bag. Where are we wearing bathrobes? Asked Jack. I think they're called called kim kimonos. Said Annie. Oh right, said Jack. Where we land exactly? Jack sat, and Jack and Annie looked out the window. Below the trees was a beautiful garden filled with tree, cherry trees and long leaf willows. A waterfall tumbled into the sp- sparkling green pool. Wow! Said Annie. Jack opened the Japan book and found a painting that looked like a garden. He read a lot to Annie, in the one hundred six south. One one thousand six hundred. The Imperial Garden surrounded the Imperial Palace in the capital city of Japan. The city was called Edo, say E E Do, in the mid one thousand eight eight hundred. Its name was changed to Tokyo, say Tokyo. Tokyo said Annie. I've always did go to Tokyo. Me too said Jack. He read on the late one thousand six hundred in Japan were years of peace and pro prosperity, prosperity, and art and culture survived. Survived, but it's. Time when the country was completely closed to outside world, no one was allowed to come in. The citizens of Edo were fre- 
frequently checked to make sure they had passports. What passport exactly? Said Annie. It's an official booklet that says who you are. Said Jack. It's also a list of different countries you had traveled so, to. He said he hurry more. Anyone who did not, not have a passport were considered a spy and punished severely. Uh oh, said Annie. We don't have a passport. Yeah, that's the problem, said Jack. Hey, what if we use the want of the dientas to make passports, said Annie. Good idea, said Jack. He peeked inside his bag. Good, the one of the ideas was here. Wait, wait, said Annie. We can't remember the rules. We can only use the magic wand for the good for others. Oh, right, said Jack. And we have to try our hardest before we use the wand, said Annie. We haven't tried anything yet, said Jack. I guess we should start just to looking for the secret of happiness and hope no one catches, said ja- Annie. Shh, said Jack. Listen, a bell ring ringing in the distance. The ring grew louder. Louder than came the sounds of horses. Jack and Annie crouched at down. They raised their heads just high enough to peek out the window. Through the flowery tree branches, they saw a small procession coming through the garden. The man leading the procession was ringing the bell. The two Two men walked behind him, holding up banners. Behind them, four men rode rode slowly on horses' back. They all wore baggy towers and puffy shirts. They had hazard shapes, except for knots of black hair. Each has two swords, a long one and a short one, hanging from his belt. At the very end of the procession rode a man in a blowing purple robe and a small purple hat. Red tassel hung from the Bridle of his large black horse. Jack looked at the search book again. He found a picture that looked like a man on the black horse. He read the caption to himself. In the thousand one. One thousand six six hundred, a military ruler known as the Shogun, say Shogun, lived in the. Center of the imperial garden in the palace that has hundreds of rooms. They, that last guy is Shogun. Jack whispered to Annie. He lives in a big palace in the garden. He kept reading. Often the Shogun's warriors travel with him. They were called the Samurai Samurai. Oh man! Whispered Jack. Those are、uh, those other guys are Samurai. He and Jack, he and Annie barely escaped and. A more samurai on their earlier trip to Japan. Samurai were excellent horsemen, well trained in the art of fighting. The code of the samurai was strict. Sim- samurai did not show their feelings. They had great powers of concentration. They're gone," said Annie. Jack looked at the window. The shogun and his samurai warriors had disappeared down the tree shaded dirt road. We should get out. Out of the imperial garden, fast," said Jack. "If we stay here, we're just asking to be caught. How did we get out?" asked Annie. Jack looked in the Japan book. He found the map of Edo. Look, he said, pointing at the map. We have to get over the bridge that leads away from the imperial gardens into the city. The bridge is on the east side of the garden. The morning sun is over there," said Annie, squinting into the sunlight. "So that must be the east. Let's climb down and head that way." That last guy is a shogun. Jack whispered to Annie. He lives in the big palace in the garden. He kept reading. Often the shogun's warrior traveled with him. They were called samurai. We, we have to get over this bridge that leads away from the imperial garden into the city. The bridge is on the east side of the garden. The morning sun is over there," said Annie, squinting into the sunlight. "So that must be the east. Let's climb down and head that way. Good plan. Then we'll be walking 
in the opposite direction of the samurai. The jack writes that Annie should start it down the rope ladder. Be careful, said Jack. We don't want anyone to see us sneaking around the Imperial Garden. Jack put the Japan book into his burlap bag and slung the bag over his shoulder. As he stepped onto the ladder, he nearly tripped on his kimono. Kimono, or brothers, he said. He hopped up the clothes and carefully climbed down. Jack joined Annie on the white path. A guest of dry and carried petals, petals from cherry trees through the air. The long branches of the willows swayed over the grass. Jack and Annie began heading east, keeping their eyes and ears open for more people. They walked past flowers, beds, and big rocks. They wa- walked around the ponds with swans. They stared down the narrow lane between the blossom tree- cherry trees. Just as they came out from the under tr- under the trees, Jack and Annie saw four men strolling a Toward them, one man was shorter and older than the others. He wore a straw hat and a tattered brown coat and used a walking stick. The other three had shaved heads with top knots, and two swords hung from each each of their belts. Samurai was Jack. Yikes! Said Annie. Run! Said Jack. Jack and Annie turned around and stared. Started running back down the narrow lane. Jack heard the men running after them. Halt! cried the samurai. Jack grabbed Annie's hand and they stumbled to the halt. Out of breath, they turned to face the three samurai who was rushing toward them. Who are you? one of the samurai barked. He was holding up his sword. Why do you run from us? Are you the spies? Just as Jack was. About to answer, hear the voice shout, "Baku, Koto!" The man with the walking stick and straw hat was hurrying, hurrying toward them. Baku, Koto, what are you doing here? He called out to Jakanani. Why did you not wait for me at the bridge? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel.